Hello everyone! This video series will be all about how to assemble the Datsun Prusa i3. So, why this video? Well, I have been getting a lot of questions about the Datsun Prusa i3 on my social media accounts. I have decided to go ahead and build me another one, but this time I will be making some videos about it. Okay, so first off we start with the small ones, which goes on the back side. And for the middle part here we use the long screws, that I believe they are 25 millimeters on the outer of the ball. You don't need to tighten these too much to begin with. We're gonna tighten everything up when we got it leveled. Just, just finger, screw it. Okay, so that's one. It should be just easier to hold it like this. Twenty-five millimeter bolts, M five. I chose one ones with the uh, with a flange. So I can get this. Uh, they have this flange, which makes me not need to use a, which makes it not necessary to use a washer. So. As you can see, it's a good idea to have a long Allen key for these. Next up we have oh, sorry. these parts, they actually 
actually are a bit updated. They are not as thick and they are more curved, curved on, on, on this part right here. So uh, this is the old models, but I'm gonna use them because I've, well, now I've printed them. So, And the small ones here are also not so thick on the newest version, but these still work. It kind of goes without saying that these go on the inside. And this one goes on the top. Same for the other side. This one. Okay. This one on the inside. And this one on the top. Like that. That's a, uh, there's some play, but I guess it's gonna be okay. Okay. Uh, these rods, I believe, are 32, 320. Oh, actually. So I'm going to do the I use the Igus. Um, they should work very nice. These are the original Igus rods. According to the place where I got them. Okay. Nope doesn't fit there, but it fits perfectly here. The back. I'm gonna start with the back, it doesn't matter which side you take first, but mm, I'm gonna do it like this. Yeah. Oh, and uh, I actually ran out of M5 bolts, so I'm gonna use these for the back end of the machine. You're not gonna see them, so. I actually forgot to put the T-nuts in here for the power supply and for the main board. We can fix that. Okay, so this is the side where we're gonna main board and of course also one of these stabilizer. Um, 
blank for the main board. Uh, I guess one for the. Three. And I actually needed one down here also, but I'm, I don't have any more of these regular T nuts. I'm gonna use a, a drop in T nuts for the bottom one. No biggie. Yeah. Uh, so then one, two, let's check out two right. These are the parts that will uh, hold the main board. They go like that. One, two, yeah, that's. Three on this side, and on the other side, we are going to need uh, one for the power supply, two for the power supply, uh, one for the stabilizer, one more for the power supply, and the final one of these for the power supply. So, yeah. If you have these, you should have six on this side and also you should have five on this side. No, sorry, four. Four on this side. Let's mount it again. Get everything tightened down, tight down and uh, now it has this. We want to get rid of that. Now they actually help with this. These cool things. We're using these low profile V slot. Oh, they, I, I don't know if they call they're not called V slots, but they're from Open Bills. I know that for sure. And they are eight millimeters. These are eight millimeters. One, two, three, four, and the I guess I could have made some kind of um, hole which could be threaded with an M5 or perhaps even an M3, but um, I have chose to use some normal wood screws for the with a point, the pointy point, to make it to uh, secure it to the to the top frame. Yeah, you can you can do what you want with that. So, first off, if I did not already assemble this, I would have, of course, wouldn't have no holes right there. Remember, this these holes up here are for the for the uh, strain relief for the for the wires that comes later. Um, I guess I'm gonna do. Also, when you print these, you can actually print them on this side uh, on my printer you don't need any kind of support perhaps your printer does but I've actually printed these without support making it as easy as possible so the first one through there and the second one I'm gonna put one of the drop in T nuts like that make sure it comes in okay so I'm gonna put this one right there and use the middle one because we need the two on each end to align with the uh, main board later. I'm just gonna just just tiny bit of tightening them. Um, that won't work, that won't work, but I did the thing that I just kind of slid it down to where it was not making any movement. And then what I did was I took a marker and I hold it, held it steady and then I made some marks in here and drilled, I believe it was a two millimeters, uh, two millimeter hole I made and then the threads on these would make would, uh, would do the rest. So if I get that correct, I should be able to. I do recommend that you drill these holes uh, 
with a small drill before uh, trying to put these in. I already I already made the hole, so I'm just gonna do like a every TV chef and go right ahead and put these in. This one, I believe, is perfectly vertical now, so I'm going to tighten this down. Both these like that. So let's mount the other side. Same procedure as a rear James.
remember the little hole in there just to place upwards and as the manual says you don't have to or you shouldn't tighten this all the way down because then you don't have any chance of adjusting the belt so it's about a millimeters of space there should be enough okay these will wrap around the bearing um, but before you can use these you need to put a square nut m3 square nut in either side and then they're ready to mount them Then we take these top pieces um, with the 10 millimeters M3 bolts, put them on top right there. facing towards the two bearings. I wash it in a X nut. Okay, you guys, to uh, make sure you get the belt uh, mounted correctly, you can use the original uh, manual from step 31 um, and just go through it step by step and you will get a very decent result. So when we get to step 38, it should look kind of like this, but actually not at all.
Okay, so the next step on building the Datsun Prusa i3 is the x-axis, which is one of the things you can build using just the original Prusa uh, MK3 uh, assembly manual. So I'm gonna do this assembly and I'm gonna do a, a little bit of video about that and then I'll be back. Okay guys, I hope this uh, video was helpful and that it made you wanna build or already are starting to build the Datsun Prusa. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. And of course, if you like this video, you can always pound that uh, thumbs up button. Uh, and if you want to be sure to catch the next video in this series, uh, be sure to subscribe and, uh, and uh, push the bell button. Yeah, so and, uh, until next time, happy building, see you later.